Here we are requested to write down the sets for yield of A and yield of B. That means we are requested to write down the sets of strings that can be generated by A and B or the, the sets of tuples that, we can, that A and B can generate. Here I want to start with B because when you look at the rules there's only one rule where B is on the left hand side and therefore this is easier to look at. So this is how I write it down. I say the, the yield of B is equal to a set and as you might see this B is generating two strings and each string consists of a B and I write it down like this. It's like a tuple and at the first position there's a B and at the second also and then we are done for B. Now for A the whole stuff is a little bit more complicated because well let's we have one rule here with A on the left hand side and we have an also another rule here. So I like to generate some examples to get an idea of what um, what strings A can generate. Now this here, this one is easy. This one corresponds to, to AA, so this one looks similar to the example with B. And then I'll, um, when I look at the other rule, I would, um, yeah, I would look at how it processes the string. So, so let's let's pretend that there are already some strings in it. So if I would have, if I would have this, the simple. Um, this tuple included on the right hand side and I would have here on the right hand side of this rule the A with the two A's and also I would, well for B there's only one possibility because as we already know then, then we already know that the yield of B can only be this one so in B there can all only be something like this. And now let's see what we get on the left hand side if we include all this. So and then you might um, we have to when we look at this X on the right hand side, so let me let me make this colorful. We have those uh, here and the X at the same time is um, is in this position so we are writing the A down here. Then we are having this A which is static. Then we are including the, the V which comes in this rule from the first entry of B. So this corresponds to Z1. Then on, in the next string we have a Y and the Y is from the second part of the A. So this is the y and so I write it down here. Then we have another static a and then we have we have those w which belongs to the second part in the b. So this b um, is copied to this position. Now if you now take another look you know that well this would be our new A string and we know that the static stuff, so this A for example, or that the stuff from the B which is, this is always the same. So this part and WA on this side. So these parts are always the same and this part comes new from that A. So that means if we make another recursion so if we had on the right hand side an A with an A which already went through this once, then we would have an A with A A B here and A A B here. 
and we would have the V, which always, which always includes BV. And on the left side, we would now get, um, we would now get the um, this part. So from the A, let me do this in another color. So this part from the A would come here, A, A, B. Then we would have our static A and the B from that B. And on the other side, we would first have the part from, we would first have the other part from the A. Uh, I, I don't have much space here, so in this, here we would have um, another A and B because the A is already there and the B comes from the B. So now, now maybe you see the pattern. So we have here our A, B. And here it's always, here it's repeating. So now we have two A, Bs here with another A in front of it. So when I now write down the pattern for A, I have something like this. So, so I have, I know I have a tuple of two parts which is generated here. And I know in, when there's um, when I didn't add anything, then I I want to generate those tuple with two a's. So and these a's must always be here. They are the same as here in the first position. And then at the positions after, I always append a and b. And for example, here I appended them one time, and here they are already appended two times, and it's the same for both of the strings. So I write down here my AB part, and this AB part can be repeated um, a lot of times, and also here. And then because this whole thing is donating a set, I write down some um, some properties of the set, and I'm saying that my n can be greater or equal than zero, because when I want to generate this one, then I didn't append any a b's to it, so in this case, here my n would be zero, and here I appended a b one time, and here I already appended um, it two times, and if I would repeat it. I would get new a's and b's because, well, the x, y, it's the same here. In this case, the x part is from the previous a, and the a and the v always contain a and b together. So in each recursion, I always append a and b, and therefore this is my yield of a.